Oh yeah, sexy biscuits. Nice. Long black clothes, 1975 and welcome to a very random vlog although to be fair the title makes it sound a lot more random than it is because I'm pretty sure if you're of my generation uh, and you started I would have started primary school I would have started infant class in 1980 I believe Christ I feel old uh, then I'm sure this was not just limited to my school and this is a direct effect of the complete lack of I guess technology available at the time obviously it wasn't the dark ages in 1980 but you know if you compare it to now then like it was the dark ages in 1980 um, but watches right when I was at school were a huge huge deal and uh, this video was inspired by a couple of things um, I found this watch the other day I bought this watch in 2008 and that battery I'm not sure how it's gained an hour. That battery is the original battery. To be fair, I haven't used any of the functions on this watch in about um, seven, eight years because I didn't know where it was. So I couldn't set the change the time. I couldn't use the light. Does the light still work? No, but who remembers that? But yeah, so yeah, original battery. That's quite impressive, I feel. But the reason this like made me want to talk about it is this, while it's the Chrome version, um, this is like the same model because obviously um, Casio, uh, they, well, so some stuff, simple stuff like this never goes out of style, although you could argue watches has because of phones, but also there's a retro market for these as well. But Casio used to release watches and basically chrome like this, or there'd be a version of this which would be black rubber. And I had the black rubber version of this as a kid. Um, as did my twin brother because I think we both got them for our birthday but the actual face and all the information on the face look at that for a blast of the, the retro goodness um, is exactly the same and yeah also I think they maybe did a gold chrome model I'm not sure can't remember but I found this the other day I don't wear watches now not because I don't like watches um, but a I guess you could argue that my phone's made it irrelevant and has done for a lot of people but B, um, I have a job that involves very physical lifting and stuff like that. And, you know, um, I smash my hands on shit a lot. So it wouldn't last five minutes. But also talking to someone at work and um, they were talking, you know, talking about how their kids, uh, you know, have a smartphone. I don't get a smartwatch. I don't get smartwatches. It's a watch that communicates with your phone. So your watch can do everything that your phone does. Plus you look at it. If you make a call because you have to do it like that although you could argue if you were a kid and you saw that you were talking through your wrist then like a sci-fi movie you'd probably think it was the tits but at this point when you're doing this i'm thinking just use your phone in it just use your phone but yeah so they've got their kid a um smartwatch to talk to their smartphone um i i think because again because i'm old that kids have all this have access to all this technology there's definitely a charm and enjoyment from the fact that things were far simpler when i was a kid you know in the dark ages as we've previously mentioned but also i generally think because of these simpler things you had and the appreciation you got out of it um that kids these days genuinely i don't want to sound like that shake hard a boy old man sort of thing but missing out like sometimes you know less is more i know that's cliche but it truly truly is and it got me thinking about you know and i was talking to this person they are the same age as me and they completely agreed which is why i want to talk about it which is do you remember what a big deal your watch was back at you know in the day at school like your first watch your first digital watch because it was about competing you know um with your mates it was about bragging rights it was literally your first piece of personal tech as well as some sort of you know um uh, identification of you you know like what you like stuff like that what you're into you know uh because you know like obviously there was a whole range of licensed watches and stuff like that i'm looking at you james bond 007 watch that we all drooled over in the argus catalog into a lesser degree marshall and ward and littlewoods catalogs that was as one of my um 
uh, subscribers pointed out in, um, I think it was last week's vlog, that uh, there was a mail away for it on Smith's or something, and my brother Jason entered into this mail away, collected all the tokens and stuff like that, and they ran out of watches. And I think the only thing that did with it was James Bondy, was it played the James Bond theme. It wasn't like you could blow shit up and stuff like that, but that was still like fucking damn cool. But yeah, like this little watch were basically cutting edge tech for kids, so you could like one upmanship on your mates and stuff like that, and it made a personal statement about you, although to be fair, it probably made more of a personal statement about A, how spoiled you were, and B, how rich your parents were, because I got a few for Christmas, but the majority of ones I bought, I bought myself, and that involved good old fashioned hard graph, although as you know, if you watch the channel, I had so many part-time jobs as a kid, um, I was pretty well off. Anyway, so obviously Digital Watch kicked in because we all are familiar with the time on the traditional wind-up mechanical watch and stuff like that, which you could argue basically now as an adult is the watch you should be using because it's classical, uh, it's old school, and it's basically, well, you know, a, a, a thing of beauty, you know, like it's death. That is definitely a statement. I'm not saying buy a Rolex or shit like that. When you start spending the money on a watch that you could buy property with, I think, I think you've lost touch with something. Um, but... Uh, I mean, I've got a Citizen watch now that I don't wear anywhere unless I go out and I should wear a suit because you have a watch, don't you, that you wear with a suit because it's like, it's gold and it's mechanical and it's wind up and stuff like that. But that, you know, that wasn't like stupid money or anything like that. But the point is, I'm getting away from my uh, subject matter here is, right, so at some point in the 70s, digital watches came out and it was a massive, massive leap forward, even though, again, you could argue it's kind of lost its class a bit. There was that amazing one by Sir Clive, looks utterly, utterly fantastic, but was just what it get really hot and then just break um but at some point they would have been quite pricey then as with everything the technology falls in price and then my understanding this is a very speed readers version that is in the early 80s digital watches just became like everywhere everyone had them they were the thing and they were at last affordable and as a kid i mean you never even really needed a watch did you you had clocks in your house your parents would wake you up for school they tell you to go to bed while you're at school your teachers would tell you to go to the next class and stuff like this i'm thinking more primary school you could argue that you maybe did need one in secondary school um which obviously watches were really cool in primary school and then probably two or three years into secondary school you still had that competing with your mates and your bragging uh, rights and stuff like that but so I remember it must have been like four five maybe six and me and my twin brother and we were on holiday down the uh, my dad's caravan and there was a market there in Minehead that was brilliant for stuff um, later on it's brilliant for Zeta Spectrum games it was brilliant for Star Wars figures it was brilliant for Battlestar Galactica figures my brother Jason bought a bunch of Battlestar Galactica figures there it was brilliant for everything but obviously you would have a store or a stand that just sold digital watches so me and my twin brother in we just wanted a digital watch so my dad bought us two even by digital watch standards very crude very simple watches basically this mine was black my brother's ian was blue i can still remember that it only had um one button on because that's the other thing you could tell how cool a watch was by the number of buttons it had so functions because this has four and then you can see the functions obviously around by the buttons but this just had one and it was to set the time and that was it it didn't even have a light although you could argue that the lights on these things were absolutely comical and farcical it would just light up the corner you know you weren't reading the time with that you were getting up turning the light on looking at your watch turning your light off at which point you should just have a clock radio <laughs> but yeah and that was our first digital watch and there's a four-year-old five-year-old this is fucking cool this is absolutely fucking brilliant look at me i'm fucking super fly but then, you know, you go to school and other kids start getting watches because they just started, like, they're becoming sports watches and stuff like that. And the more shit you could cram onto a watch, you know, like, the, the cooler it was and the more as a kid you would absolutely want to have it. And one of my fondest memories as a kid for birthdays and, you know, when you would buy your own was just, as I mentioned, just, you know, crawling through the Argus catalogue or the Littlewoods catalogue or Master Maud catalogue through the watch section trying to find one that was in your budget range on the money that you were allowed to have for your birthday or christmas yeah so it was in your range but then getting as many features as you could on it as possible so you could held, hold your head up you know with pride when you went to school with your badass new digital watch and compete with the other kids and they're all worded the same way weren't they liquid crystal display quartz um, Casio watch, uh, seven day calendar feature, alarm, hourly chime. Did you even need an hourly chime? It beeped or went beep beep every hour on the hour. Like, you didn't need, I mean, what, what were these things actually for? They were clearly for, you know, 
kids, because kids love shit like this, to sell your kids um, vicariously through you, the adult, the parent, um, a watch. That was it. And then it would be stuff like waterproof. This was a great one. They were either splash resistant, basically meaning you could wear it in the rain, or they were waterproof. And the more it went, or the deeper it went, I should say, in meters, this was like, like how deep it went. Because who wears a digital watch if you go going diving or something like that? But the deeper it went, um, the more credibility and coolness you got, like, you know, we got deeper meters because it was always in meters against other kids with similar watches at school. So I remember you like you used to argue, which is yeah, check it out. You know my watch, yeah, a war resistant up to ten meters, and you'd be like, you're eight, and you can't fucking swim. That's completely irrelevant. But it didn't matter as a kid. Absolutely did not matter. That was something that you could brag about. They used to advertise the light, as I just mentioned. That was utterly, utterly useless. You could get watches with solar panels on. Um, they were quite expensive. I don't even know how well they would have worked back then in, you know, very early to mid 80s. But this little chunk of text, because it was like that, wasn't it, in a catalogue, in a club book, was, you know, get as much as you can, you know, stopwatch. Like, did you need a stopwatch as a kid? No. Did you want one? Hell yes. Was it cool to have one on your phone and yeah, for you could compete with your mates? Because if all your mates have, you know, uh, a stopwatch on their phone and you had all the other functionality, you know, water resistant, all that shit, hourly chime, 24 hour alarm functionality, calendar, shit like this, but you didn't have a stopwatch, then you're already lost. Already lost. And so that would be at some point, that's when we, my, myself and my twin brother got the black version of this watch. And pretty damn happy with it. I remember going to school and we were doing arts and crafts and then we had to wash up. And I was deliberately, because I'm a child, so therefore I'm a fucking idiot, washing this shit in the sink in the classroom with my hands Clearly under the water, in case any other kid knows. They went, Dave, your watch. That's all right. Water resistant, 10 meters. Uh, I think it was uh, actually only splash resistant. Um, and they had those, this one's got it, the screws on the back, which are absolutely impossible to get off. And once you'd taken it apart and changed the battery, even if you screwed it back in, you never got the seal right. And so the next time it went underwater, not even 10 meters, it was fucked. And then you get the condensation on the inside, wouldn't you? That would never leave it. And every time you looked at it, it would annoy, annoy the shit out of you. But I remember that watch and I loved it. But we were on holiday again at the caravan site. And I remember I flipped a coin because we were deciding like ends for football or something. Um, ends being a very strong descriptive term. How in the clock room seems only apt for this subject matter. Yeah, when it was literally, you know, they were five metres apart. And I flipped it and went like that. And then literally as a kid, you know, when you've had that dumbass moment, you're like, oh, shit. And then went like that, and there was a massive crack. And then, even though it still kept perfectly good time, there was technically nothing wrong with it. You, you know, when, like, something gets that chip or a scratch or a break or something like that as a kid, you don't want it anymore. You absolutely don't want it. And then I think the next watch um, where I absolutely nailed it in the kudos uh, stakes, next two watches, I'm not going to go through my entire history of watch, but it was all about getting something that you knew no one else had at school, because, um, oh, also, quickly, calculator watches, calculator watches were called Back to the Future, yeah, um, I mean, when you first saw a calculator watch, my brother Jason had one, he got it with a Cascade 50 game tape um, at the back of a magazine, and you're like, as a kid, that blew your mind, I've got a calculator on my wrist, it's the future, I'm going to take this to school and I'm going to ace maths and absolutely everything. And the teacher would just be, take that off, give it here. But why, sir? Why do you want my watch? Because it's a calculator. No, it's not, sir. How do you know it's a calculator? Because it looks exactly the same as a calculator if it was really small and then stuck on your wrist. But as a kid, this was like your bread and butter. Fucking calculator watches, man. Amazing. But then it was when they, instead of having an alarm, um, they would have a tune, uh, like the James Bond watch, which was a James Bond theme. Um, I don't know how good it was. I might have to YouTube it and see. I'm sure it must be on there. Someone still has one. Probably worth a few quid, that, if it's in decent nick, surely. Um, yeah, so if your watch played a tune for its alarm, that was fucking cool as well. So we were on holiday again in this market in my neighborhood with all my saved money. And they had a watch. It was a chrome one. Pretty much looked standard like this. It had stopwatch. It had all the shit. You used to start getting little dials, didn't you? Um, LED 
uh, LCD like you know dials where stuff would rotate and things like that to show you minutes and time progressing and stuff like that. Talk a little bit like that about that, which was probably my last watch at school in a moment. But yeah, they had a watch, right? So it had all the functionality. It was only splash resistant, but it's it's saving grace where it would wipe the floor with everyone else's watches at school was it played seven different tunes that you could set as your alarm. Can't remember any of them as an adult apart from the Yellow Rose of Texas, which I believe was a very common tune on watches that had a melody that you used an alarm. But the fact that it had seven tunes, and I, I remember my teacher threatened to um, take it off me because one day when I was just showing off to the kids in class, and this was probably when I was a first year, um, it's secondary school, just cycling through all the tunes continuously, like, yeah, look at me. I've got a watch that plays seven tunes. Who wants to fucking touch me? Um, but yeah, so that was that was like an easy one to nail it in the bragging and rights. And I remember like, like kids were generally impressed. Kids were generally impressed. I do remember my mate Luke Buckland got, I'm sure everyone remembers this, and I think you can buy them again. Do you remember the little Transformer watch? It wasn't official or anything like that, but it was just like a square on, um, just looked like a regular plastic square watch on a wristband, and you could pull it off the wristband and you could transform it into a robot. Uh, and it had the time in the middle of its chest. And it only had basic functionality, but that was fucking cool. Luke had one of those at secondary school, and I remember thinking that that was fucking cool, because I absolutely love... Uh, you know, or love transport, well, still love transformers because they're cool. Why wouldn't you? <laughs> but yeah, that was a pretty, pretty cool watch. And then you get ones free in serial and stuff like that, when they would be the shittest digital watches ever, like free Star Wars watch or free um, Frosty's watch. And it would literally just be the functionality, no lights, one button, set the date, set the time. Um, and it would just have the, 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 the fascia plate would just have a very crude, small picture. Um, of whatever it was licensed off, like whether it was, you know, um, Star Wars, Transformers, because these were common in markets as well, and I guarantee they weren't officially licensed in markets and stuff like that. And breakfast cereals and crisps as well gave those away. Um, they'd be cool now. I wonder if some of those are quite collectible because of the official ones anyway. But, um, yeah, so I do I do remember those. But what was the next one? No, the next watch where I absolutely nailed it, because, again, I didn't... I didn't really even need a watch at school, and I wasn't buying it for the practical use of a watch. I was buying it just to fucking brag and wipe the, the grins, at, at, you know, off all the other kids' faces at school, and they were doing the same thing with their watches. Um, and it was a mini game watch, so it was an LCD game, think Tiger game, it was a car game. Again, it was from that market in my head, I swear to God, you could buy everything there. Um, yeah, and it just had... Uh, Again, I'll use this watch as an example. At the bottom, it had two really small red plastic buttons in the middle for setting guns up and stuff like that. Then it had a left and a right button. And one of the buttons in the middle was like a function mode. And all the time on it, it had, it was just a very crude like pole position, but in LCD, you all know what these ones look like. I mean, calling it a game is a very strong descriptive term. Even calling Tiger handhelds a game is still a very strong descriptive term. But the point is, it was a game watch and you could play a very crude version of a driving game where you just went left and right for as long as you could crash three times you know it would keep score it was important it would keep score crash three times and it would the game would end and the thing is though the, the time was like all the information for the game and the game was running continuously and the time was in the top left hand corner of it and it was tiny you could argue that you know while it was a game um its main functionality which it had one job and doing it failed because it was so hard to read the time but the point is no one else in my form had a fucking um you know game watch and then i think the last one um that i truly remember is i became classy and i was absolutely obsessed um, I'm not really doing this justice. Like I said, you would spend hours and hours going through the catalogs trying to maximise your cash, and you would have such like, well, think about it, Playground Wars, you know, pre Mega Drive and stuff like that, and arguably around at the same time as Commodore 64, but but with watches. And as you know, it was all about mine is better than yours because that's the be all and end all of your fucking world when you're a child. Obviously, spoiled kids pretty much won this because they're spoiled kids and the, the deck is rigged in their favour. But, like I said, seven tunes, uh, game watch, you know, I was I was living high for a bit, but because I was obsessed with Batman in 1989, my mum got me for Christmas one year um, uh, a battery analogue watch, and by that I mean it obviously it had hands, but it was still battery, and then you would just set the time, you wouldn't have an alarm or anything like that by pulling out, I think I've still got it, pulling out the, uh, the, the winder, even though it's battery powered and then set the time and then pushing it back in and it had a second hand and because the bat signal black plastic bat signal was so big on the face of the watch three of the numbers 
were missing. I fucking loved that watch. Immediately at that point, I was like, and that was pretty cool um, because it was Batman. It may not, you know, sing, dance, play tunes, shit like that, but it was Batman in 1989 and it was officially licensed and stuff like that. And that was pretty cool. I fucking loved that watch. And that for me was because it was Batman and you kind of understood as you get a little bit older, what was I, 12 or 1989? That, yeah, this is a bit classy, this. This is a little bit more classy than fucking banging out the Yellow Rose of Texas and shit like that and trying to play pole position on, on my arm. Um, and I love that watch. Had that watch for years. Our sports teacher, Mr. Dudley, he was a retired third division footballer and he came to teach us um, PE. And every time my form played uh, sports, he'd always borrow someone's watch to keep track of the time. And once he saw I had the Batman watch, I never borrow anyone else's. He'd always borrow my watch. Oi, Wade, watch now. Uh, and that was kind of cool because all the other kids were like, but look what my watch does. Yeah, but his watch has got a fucking Batman on it, all right? None of you can top that. Um, yeah, I think the last watch, I bought it off my mate Matt Watson, and that was the one I was talking about where it had so much functionality that you wouldn't need that it was absolutely stupid. So at the time in the middle, and it had like three, like one, two, um, four, sorry, four little wheels, each doing something different, and then a bar in the middle that would go up in chunks. And dependent upon what you do, it had so many fucking buttons. It was huge. It was like that. Like you could use that as a, a stab vest. Uh, it just had a regular alarm, no tunes or anything like that, because it was a serious adult's watch. Um, I think his parents just gave him another watch that was far more functionality. He just sold me this for a tenner, and this would be something that was way above the money I could afford on a watch. And I'm like, hell yes. I'll have that. And I love that watch just because it had all these dials. Don't even know what half of them did. But they filled up, they went black, and then they went back to zero and they kept going dependent upon what functionality you set on the watch. Was it telling you how much air you've got left? Probably. Don't know. Never went deep sea diving. I'm pretty sure it's water resistant to 25 meters. I don't know if you'd ever be able to confirm that because 25 meters, what's the pressure at 25 meters? You'd be feeling it, wouldn't you? Surely. That'd have to be a pretty sturdy watch. I don't know, but the point is, when I found this, and when I talked to that guy uh, at work, and found out that it was the same for him, your first watch, or watches in general, when you were a very young kid, at school, particularly, were, they were a big deal. That said something about you. They're like, like you said, it was your true first piece of, you know, personal tech, uh, into, you know, kind of independence as well, if you know what I mean. I've got a watch. I'm a grown-up and shit like that, even though you're not. It's just a watch. Relax there a bit. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, watches were a huge deal. I haven't thought about this in years. And when I thought about it, yeah, got member berry goggles and shit like that and a little bit of nostalgia going on because watches were a big deal, particularly at primary school. And I had some corkers. I've just touched upon the surface here. I think I've just probably taught myself into buying a calculator watch as well because you can, they still make the model, don't they? Marty had. So, yeah. I'll get on that, thought you should know. But yeah, watches were an absolute massive deal and it's so much fun, like Christmas and your birthdays, going through the watch section of a catalogue, trying to get as much as you could. And it was the way they always worded it. Anyone who's ever read, you know, back then, I'm pretty sure it is now. I'll look it up. We've got an Argus catalogue. The functionality, of, but it'll all be shit smart watches now. They don't want modern watches. They want old school watches that do fuck all. And what they do do a lot of, you really actually don't need. <laughs> but unless you're a child you're in the 80s. I should have said that, because that's the main thing here, isn't it? Child in the 80s, any form of new tech that you can get your hands on is ultimately cool. But yeah, they were such a big deal, especially for me and my brothers and the kids in my class. Anyway, as always, I'd love to know, I think, especially if this was as big a deal for you as it was for me in my school, and I am aware that that would make this very video very, very age-specific. As always, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you later.